Eric Malilo is the Member of Parliament for the Kenora Riding. We discuss issues this week. It's James with Net News Ledger joining us from Kenora. In his office is Eric Malilo, the MP for the Kenora Riding. Eric, welcome back to Net News Ledger. Good morning, James. Thanks for having me back. We're getting a little bit of a lag there. You can, you must not be on the T Bay Tel Fiber over in your office yet. <laughs> no, the internet connection is uh, always a bit unpredictable here, but uh, I hope I'm coming through clearly. Well, it's an area that you've been fighting on to get better internet across the north. Uh, what's been happening this week? What do our readers and viewers need to know? Yeah, that's that's a good place to maybe pick up because I uh, I followed up on a question that I previously asked in the House of Commons on internet, uh, particularly in the communities of of Madsen and, and Shoal Lake 39 in our region who were promised uh, an improved connection in 2017. Uh, I followed up with uh, the government this week, uh, virtually in the House of Commons, and uh, uh, I was, it was actually indicated to me that the, these two projects uh, for these communities uh, should be completed by March. So that's a pretty quick turnaround considering they've had so much time and, and we haven't seen a lot of progress, but uh, I'll be closely following that and of course holding the government uh, to account on that. But uh, aside from that issue, it's been great to get out uh, in the riding a bit more as well and uh, just uh, do a bit of door knocking, hear what people are thinking uh, and what people are here uh, feeling on the ground as well. One of uh, the issues we're facing here in Thunder Bay, we're moving back into the gray lockdown area. We've got over 350 cases active of COVID-19. There's been more deaths. We're up to 30. The Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center is basically at capacity in the ICU and in the, the COVID ward. How are things that way in Kenora? Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, Kenora in, uh, with White Dog, we have the uh, uh, the outbreak uh, there. But uh, from from the looks of things, it it does seem like it's um, uh, it is relatively contained. Not not a lot of community spread, uh, considering what could have uh, occurred, I believe. Uh, and and I you know I, I tip my hat to uh, our. Um, uh, our healthcare workers, the province, everyone who who stepped up to help uh, support uh, the community and make sure they have the resources they need to uh, uh, to respond to that. But uh, uh, as I understand, we're we're staying in the uh, the yellow zone uh, into next week. So uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's a good reminder for people to you know make sure that we're still doing our best to follow all the protocols and, and stay safe. But uh, uh, but that uh, our numbers. Are uh, are improving a bit, and that uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, uh, we can uh, keep fighting this together and get through this uh, as quickly as possible. Now, uh, years and years ago, I was I lived in Kenora. We were on Valley View Drive. Uh, this week, there's been reports coming out of some racism toward Indigenous people related to COVID nineteen from some businesses and organizations. What have you heard on that? Yeah, I, I've heard a few different things, James. And frankly, I'm uh, I, I can't speak to a lot of the specifics because I I mean I'm I'm not on Kenora Rant and Rave. I'm I'm not on Facebook. I, I don't actually I haven't seen a lot of it uh, firsthand. But I've obviously been hearing from a lot of people uh, some of the the things that were said or, or the instances that happened. And um, you know, the bottom line, you know, any. Um, any racist comments, any prejudice, discrimination, of course, is uh, just entirely unacceptable uh, in our community. It's uh, certainly not the community um, that I know. So that's uh, that's deeply concerning uh, that that has been happening. Or uh, you know, and uh, uh, but again, you know, I, I I don't know the specifics of it. I can't speak to any of them necessarily, but. Uh, I, it is troubling, and I uh, I can't echo more strongly the words of um, Ogidjita Francis Kavanaugh, who put out a statement uh, early this week, perhaps at the end of last week, uh, reminding folks uh, across the region, uh, don't allow confusion or uh, fear or anything to uh, to really drive your uh, what you're sharing on social media, particularly because uh, we, we need to make sure we're sharing factual information and that uh, uh, that we're remaining together uh, in this fight against COVID-19. So uh, I shared his statement on uh, on my social media, and I and I, and I you know I can't echo uh, more strongly uh, those words uh, once again. We're we're seeing uh, you know instances. Uh, Fort Hope is having an issue with housing. There's people literally living in tents and shacks. 
and in the weather reporting uh, for the far north, there's extreme cold warnings last night, today, you know, it's just, there's so much work needs to be done. Do you think the government is getting the message that despite COVID, the path forward has to continue? Uh, I hope they're getting the message. Uh, I, I truly do. Uh, I had a, a great conversation with uh, uh, with Chief Harvey Yesno uh, just yesterday, actually, and uh, his office and, and, and officials from the community had reached out to me uh, in the days prior to, uh, because, you know, obviously they're facing a very difficult situation, uh, an, an immediate situation with, like you said, uh, people living in tents and, and, and shacks and, and different arrangements that uh, are... You know, unacceptable at the best of times, not to mention uh, with the extreme cold, of course. So uh, this is an issue that um, you know is happening urgently in in Fort Hope, but it's something that uh, you know it's not new to our region. It's it's not specific to that community. It's it's something that you know every single First Nation across I shouldn't say every single, but the vast majority of the, the First Nations across uh, our country. Um, could have a similar uh, issue uh, arise in terms of uh, overcrowding, in terms of uh, the lack of infrastructure. So, um, you know, uh, I know the federal government has used COVID-19 as, um, frankly, an excuse in terms of boil water advisory and, and boil water advisories and some of the other things. Uh, they said that have, have halted their ability to um, uh, to get into the communities and, and do some of that work. But the bottom line is uh, these, we, we need these investments. We need these partners. Uh, we need the federal government to uh, not lose sight of how urgent uh, a lot of these issues are, particularly in the remote uh, First Nations uh, of Northwestern Ontario. Now, uh, a message for people in the Kenora riding. Yeah, I, uh, I'll just say I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy to be uh, back in the riding now. I was, I was down in Ottawa and uh, I'm happy to be back um, uh, my office is, remains open now, and uh, I encourage anyone who uh, uh, who wants to sit down and have a conversation with me, please uh, schedule a time to do so. Uh, make sure to bring your mask, of course, and uh, 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 we can accommodate uh, uh, only about two or three people in the office uh, at a time. But uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, to be back meeting with residents and, uh, and really just hearing your concerns. Um, that's... Uh, one of my favorite parts of this job, and I, uh, I appreciate everyone who's uh, taken me up on that offer uh, already. Eric, thank you for this week. We'll talk to you next weekend. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Take care. To keep up to date, you have to subscribe. You have to hit that like button and hit the notification to stay in touch.